The Tejas MK2 is not just another upgrade but a comprehensive redesign that takes the legacy of India's indigenous combat aircraft program to a new level. HAL and ADA have re-engineered the aircraft with lessons learned from the MK1 and MK1A variants. The goal is to create a single-engine multirole fighter that bridges the gap between the lightweight Tejas and the heavier twin-engine Rafale. Its airframe is longer and sturdier, giving more internal fuel capacity, and it features an advanced digital fly-by-wire control system that allows pilots to execute sharper maneuvers with improved stability and control, even under extreme G-forces. This makes the MK2 agile in close-range dogfights while also powerful enough for long-range precision strikes. Internally, the Tejas MK2 represents a leap in cockpit technology. The pilot interface is now designed around a wide-area display quad similar to what is seen in fifth-generation fighters like the F-35, offering greater situational awareness and customizable information layouts. Alongside the WAD, a modern hands-on throttle and stick POTAS setup lets the pilot manage radar, weapons and communication without looking away from the fight. The integration of AI-driven decision aids and data fusion systems ensures that information from radar, sensors and other aircraft in the network is processed together to give the pilot a single, coherent tactical picture. This level of sophistication places the MK2 well within the advanced multirole fighter category. Another major advantage lies in its versatility. The MK2 is built to switch between mission types with minimal turnaround time. Whether configured for air superiority, deep strike or maritime operations, it can carry a wide range of weapon systems including indigenous Astra missiles, precision-guided bombs and potentially even the compact BrahMos in cruise missile. The ability to reconfigure the aircraft for different missions within hours gives the IAF flexibility in both peacetime and wartime operations. Moreover, the inclusion of an in-flight refueling probe allows extended mission range, a critical feature for modern combat aircraft that need to operate across vast distances or remain airborne for long patrols. The use of composite materials in the MK-2's construction is another noteworthy improvement. More than 40% of the airframe uses advanced carbon fiber composites, which reduce overall weight while enhancing strength and durability. These materials also lower the aircraft's radar visibility, a key consideration in modern warfare. Engineers have refined the surface contours to minimize radar reflections, especially around the engine intakes and cockpit canopy. While not a stealth fighter, these efforts make the MK-2 less detectable than many fourth-generation aircraft, giving it a tactical edge in contested airspace. When it comes to maintenance and logistics, HAL has focused on making the MK-2 easier to service. Modular systems allow rapid replacement of key components, cutting down ground time between sorties. The aircraft's diagnostics system is fully digital, constantly monitoring its own health and transmitting data for predictive maintenance. This is comparable to what advanced Western fighters like the Gripen E and F-16V are doing, helping to ensure high availability rates. HAL also plans to implement augmented reality tools in maintenance hangars, so technicians can visualize the internal layout while performing complex repair or inspection work. Fuel efficiency and thermal management have also received attention. The GEF 414INS 6 engine not only delivers higher thrust but is designed for improved fuel burn performance and reduced infrared signature. Advanced cooling systems within the airframe help manage engine, heat and avionics temperature, which contributes to better overall reliability. Together, these systems ensure the aircraft can sustain high speeds and heavy loads without overstressing the structure or the engine. An important factor during long combat missions are high altitude operations. From a training and operational perspective, the MK2 is expected to use upgraded simulators and mission planning systems. Pilots can rehearse entire missions in virtual environments that mimic radar, weather and terrain conditions. These simulators feed real-time data from actual flights, improving the realism of training. Ground crews are also being trained on digital mock-ups to understand the systems before the aircraft even takes flight. This integration between virtual and real-world environments represents the shift toward a more data-driven defense ecosystem in India. Another key area of progress is the level of foreign collaboration balanced with indigenous development. While the F-414 engine comes from GE in the United States, India has secured technology transfer agreements to produce it domestically over time. 
This arrangement not only strengthens India's industrial base but also ensures long-term self-reliance for spares and upgrades. The rest of the subsystems, from radar and electronic warfare suites to flight controls, are being developed by DRDO labs and Indian companies, marking a steady move toward full independence in fighter production. Looking at the big picture, the Tejas Mk2 is more than just a fighter jet, it represents India's ambition to be among the world's top aerospace powers. The aircraft embodies years of research, setbacks and breakthroughs that have matured India's aviation industry. It's also a symbol of national pride and strategic confidence, demonstrating that a modern, combat-ready aircraft can be designed and built largely within the country. Once operational, the Mk2 will not only fill a crucial capability gap for the IAF but also open export opportunities to friendly nations seeking affordable yet advanced fighter options. If all milestones are met, this jet could become one of the defining success stories of India's defense technology evolution in the coming decade.